Hello crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, I have selected 10 of my favorite home decor projects that you could create with Dollar Tree foam core board. Now you could find these in the office supplies and they are so much fun to create with. Now I will include the link to the original full tutorials, the free printable templates needed to make the projects, and the supply list needed to complete them all in the description box below. Now before we start, I have to say hey hey to all of my subscribers and if you are a new visitor to my channel today, I hope you consider subscribing as well and that you're inspired to create some of these crafts for your home, your friends, or your family. So now, let's jump right into the projects. Next, we'll need a thankful sign from the Dollar Tree. We'll need some wood grain contact paper from the Dollar Tree. We'll need one three pack of these five gallon paint stir sticks from Lowe's for 98 cents and a piece of foam board that is black. Now the first thing we're going to do is to take our paint stir sticks and we're going to measure to determine the measurements for cutting. Now what I ended up going with was two sticks cut at 17 inches and the last stick was cut in half at eight and a half inches in two pieces. So now we can lay out our frame and I plan to paint my frame so the measurement markings won't be an issue in this layout. Now I'll be using this wood glue from the Dollar Tree to adhere the frame together and you want to apply that wood glue to the ends of both of the long pieces as shown here. And then just apply those shorter pieces in between the two longer pieces on that glue mark. Now I'm going to be using this carpenter square from the Dollar Tree to help keep my frame square. Now once my frame is nice and dry, I'm going to use these half inch wire nails for a little bit more security on those corners. Now since these nails are so small, I am going to be holding these nails with a pair of needle nose pliers while I'm nailing them into each corner. Now we will be placing two nails in each corner of our frame. So now we will be painting this frame with chalk paint, but first I'm going to take six of these tumbling blocks and I'm going to use them as insert supports. So I'm going to arrange the blocks as shown here. And then I'm going to apply hot glue on the side of each one of the blocks and I want to secure them into place. And once that hot glue is nice and dry, we can proceed with painting our frame. Now I'm going to take my chalk paint and I'm going to start on the inside of the frame. And what I'm going to be doing is applying one nice coat of this white chalk paint. And now that the insides of the frame are painted, we can go ahead and cover those blocks. And now we can paint the edge and the outside and once everything is painted, we can sit the frame to the side to dry. So now we can work on the thankful word. Now I'm just going to remove the tags and the string from the back. So then we're going to go ahead and paint it and I'm going to use this acrylic paint. Now I could use chalk paint but I like acrylic paint for the letters since it goes on a lot smoother and it's much easier to spread. Now I'm going to start applying the paint to the entire outside of the word first. And then I'm going to proceed with painting the word surface. And then once it's all painted, we can set it to the side to dry. Now we're going to grab that black foam board. Now this has been cut to six and a half inches wide and eight and a half inches high. Now this was made by tracing the inside of that frame onto this board before we added the blocks. 
Then I'm gonna place down a cutting mat and I wanna grab that wood grain contact paper. And I'm just gonna cut a piece off to start working with. So we're gonna be cutting two inch strips and you wanna make sure that your cuts go along the grain of that contact paper. And using a ruler and an X-Acto knife makes the straightest cuts and we're gonna cut five strips. So now I'm gonna take some painter's tape and I wanna tape down that foam board to the mat just to keep it in place. So now we can go ahead and start adding our strips. Now since I'm going for a wood plank look, I will be cutting the pieces in varying lengths and I wanna make sure that those steams are straight and they are staggered. Now you wanna make sure you have enough contact paper overlapping that shorter edge to fold under when you're all done. Now when you start to apply that second piece on that first row, you wanna make sure you leave about a 1 8 inch gap between the two planks, and this will give it a more natural look. Now you wanna continue this all the way up the board, making sure you stagger those seams and that they don't line up from row to row. If you have a little top edge remaining at the top, just go ahead and continue this staggered placement. Now once all of your pieces are in place, you just want to flip your board over and you want to start to fold under those overlapped pieces on the edge. And for those longer pieces on the top, you just want to cut the in the edge at an angle and you want to fold it over and secure it into place. Now once your board is all done, go ahead and grab that thankful word and we wanna center it on the board. Now I'm gonna be using some painter's tape to mark the placement so when we remove it to add the glue, we won't lose our place. So now I'm just gonna take my high temperature hot glue and I wanna apply glue all over the back of the word and then adhere it to the board on our markings that we placed on there. Now once that all dries, we can grab our frame. And we're just gonna take our board and we're gonna insert the board inside the frame. Now this should fit in nice and snug, but you can add hot glue to the top of those blocks inside for a bit of extra security if you like. And now you have a beautiful finished sign. So now you can place this on display and enjoy this creation. I think this piece turned out awesome. Now I am really impressed with these words at the Dollar Tree this year and it really makes your crafts look high end. And this tiled wood plank design turned out great and it's the perfect backdrop for this clean modern look. Now with this neutral palette, it would be easy to blend in any home decor. Now we can start on the window pane. I did an internet search and found a window pane design that I liked, then I resized it and printed it out. Then I trimmed and taped it all together. I have included a link in the description box below for the file that I created for your personal use. Next we're going to go ahead and take our foam board and lay out our window design on top of it, facing down. Then we're just gonna secure that in place. Now grab your embossing tool and we're gonna trace that outline of that window onto the foam board, being careful not to press too hard and puncture it. Then we're gonna go ahead and remove our template and the embossed line should be visible for you to follow. 
Next, go ahead and lay down that protective cutting mat and we're gonna place that board on top and grab our X-Acto knife. Then we're gonna carefully cut and follow those embossed lines and we're gonna cut out the window openings. Now when we're all done, we're gonna carefully remove all of those cutouts. Just use your X-Acto knife to cut away any areas you may have missed. And here it is, fully cut out. Now go ahead and grab your second foam board and place your window pane on top. We're gonna take your hot glue and we're gonna run a bead of glue on the back of it and then flip it over to adhere it to that foam board. Then we're just gonna gently press that into place. Now all we have to do is just follow those cutouts from our previous window and remove them just like we did before. Doubling up on that foam board makes this a very sturdy and strong display. Now once these are all cut out, just use a nail file to smooth out all of your cuts and remove any jagged edges. Now we're going to age our window pane, so go ahead and protect your work surface and gather up your painting supplies. Now I will be using three acrylic paints, uh, one in this dark gray color called pavement, another one in white, and then the final one in a brown color. Now with a fine paintbrush, we want to mix that pavement color and that brown and start to paint random wear lines on your window pane. Then you're gonna take your dry chip brush and mix and blend the white and the pavement colors. And then we're gonna lightly wisp that brush on the window to create wear and distressing. And now that it's all dry, we are ready to apply our wreath. Now you can secure your wreath with hot glue, but I opted to use this floral wire that I already had on hand. So I'll be able to swap out the wreath with the seasons. So just flip it over and then cut a piece of that wire. Now you wanna just feed it around the wreath and twist it on the back, securing it to that window frame. You wanna do this in a few places. And there you go, all secure. Now you can add any embellishments you like. I'm gonna go ahead and add a ribbon that I made for some Dollar Tree burlap. Now you can hot glue this, but I simply wanted to use a paper clip to secure it in place, so I'll be able to swap it out.
Now I also am going to be adding this metal welcome cutout sign from the Dollar Tree that was available during Thanksgiving and I'll just nestle that into their greenery. And here is my completed project. You know, you guys, I have been wanting one of these vintage style wreath windows for so long. And I'm so excited that I could create this from items that were a dollar or less. I just love how this captured that cozy rustic farmhouse look. The detail that was added to make it worn and aged, it appears so realistic. And as you can see, it's very, very simple to do. We'll also need a piece of foam board from the Dollar Tree. We'll need some branches or sticks from the yard. And we'll also be using these bird silhouette options, which are linked in the description box below to print. Now, the first thing we're going to do is to remove all of our tumbler box from the packaging. Then we're gonna go ahead and just lay out some plastic to protect our work surface. And we're gonna place all of our blocks on top. Then grab the stain of your choice, and this is called Jacobine. We're also gonna grab some gloves and a small rag. Now we're gonna go ahead and put on our gloves and get ready to stain. So we just wanna go ahead and take our rag and dip it into the stain and apply it to all of the block pieces. And now that all the pieces are done, we're just gonna go ahead and take all of our blocks outside to dry. Now, after a few hours, they are all dry and we are ready to work with them. Now we're gonna set these to the side and go ahead and grab our foam board. And then we could just put our blocks right on top. Now we're gonna start by applying the blocks along the top edge of the foam board with hot glue. Now we're gonna be applying 11 blocks across the top. And then we're gonna go ahead and apply blocks going down the side of the foam board and there will be seven blocks this time. Now at the end of this row, I'm just gonna apply one block to the bottom as a starter for that bottom row. And I'm gonna use it as a guide. And once that block's in place, just measure the distance from this block to the bottom of the board. And we're going to mark that measurement across the bottom. So we'll know where to put all of our blocks. We're just gonna align our marks and draw our line. And now I'm going to lay out 11 blocks across the bottom. So now we've reached the end and we're gonna connect our sides. So I'm gonna take a straight edge and draw a line connecting for that final row of blocks. So now that everything is glued down, we're gonna grab our cutting mat and I am going to be cutting out our frame using my X-Acto knife. Now 
And here's our frame all ready to go. So now that we have our frame, we can grab our sticks. Now what we're going to do with our sticks is we're going to determine which ones that we would like to use for our artwork. Now once you deci decide the pieces that you want, we're just going to go ahead and clip those branches down to size. And now all you do is just go ahead and hot glue those places, those branch into their place. Now once those are in place, we can go ahead and grab our bird printables and decide which birds you would like to use for your artwork. Now once you decide, go ahead and take a black sheet of foam, felt, cardstock, poster board, or whatever you may have on hand, and you want to place the birds that you want to use on top so we can cut those out. Now I'm just going to use just a little bit of painter's tape just to secure them to uh, my foam sheet while I cut them out. And now that the birds are all cut out, we can arrange them on our branches. And once your birds already have their home, you can go ahead and hot glue them into place. Now my bottom branch sticks out from the board about a half an inch, so I'm going to glue my birds underneath my branch. Now in order to make the branch appear like it's behind the birds, I'm simply going to mark that branch with a Sharpie so it kind of blends in. And now this is perfect like this, but if you want to add optional leaves, I will show you how. Now I clipped some leaves from a thrift store plant that I already had in my stash. So what I'm going to do to make small leaves is just to fold them over and cut the small leaves out of them. Now you can get two or three small leaves from each one of the larger leaves for this print. And then I'm just going to start applying the leaves randomly to the piece with hot glue. Now once those leaves are all done, we're going to add a hang wire that I formed with a piece of wire from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to turn it over and mark that center, and then I'm going to place that wire in place and then hot glue it. Now once that hot glue dries, it's all done and we can hang it. And here is the completed project, you guys. Look, I am really loving this look and the frame looks so great. The silhouette birds look amazing in this piece and they blend in perfectly with those branches. 
Now the blocks look great too in this rich brown stain and they really elevate the look of the entire piece. Now for this project, we'll need some of these long skewers from the Dollar Tree. Two of these foam core boards from the Dollar Tree. And a sheet of this poster board from the Dollar Tree that we will paint and give it this galvanized metal look. Now the first thing we want to do is to print out the template for the window provided in the description box below. Now all we want to do is tape it together as shown here. Now we will just be using the outer edge of this template for this project. Now grab a sheet of foam board and you want to lay your template right on the top close to the edges. And then we just want to secure it in place with some painter's tape. Now once secured, I'm going to use this embossing tool to trace the outer shape of the window onto the board. Now you can use a pen or pencil to do this as well. Now once that first half has been traced, go ahead and remove the tape and the template. And then we're just going to flip it over and then we want to align and overlap that inner line by an inch and then tape it to the board. And then we just continue to trace on the other half just like we did the first half. Now once you're finished, you just take a pencil and you want to mark the outline that you just traced. Now once that's complete, we're going to mark the inner line. So I wanted my frame to be a little thicker than the template, so I'm going to mark my inside about one and a half inches from the outside line. And I'm just going to use a ruler to measure one and a half inches. Now we're going to line those marks up that we made and we're going to take that ruler and connect the marks to form the inner part of the frame. And here is our frame all traced onto the board. So now we're going to lay out our protective mat and I'm going to cut out the frame with an X-Acto knife with a fresh blade. Now for all of the edges that are straight, use the guidance of a ruler to make those cuts. And then you want to carefully pull the knife along the cuts that are curved. And now that the outside is cut, we just want to redo this for the inside. And here is our frame all cut out. Now we want to grab that second foam board and we want to set our cutout frame on top of that board. And then we're going to take our glue gun and we want to apply some glue around the frame just in sections to adhere it to that foam board. Now 
Then make sure you go under the edges applying that glue to make sure we have a secure and tight connection. Now once that frame is all secured, we're going to cut it out following the shape of the frame. And now our double layer frame is cut out. Now I'm just going to take my sanding block and sand or sandpaper and you can go around all of the edges to make them nice and smooth. So now that our frame is all sanded, we can move on to the wreath. We're going to grab one of those centers that we cut out of the frame to make the wreath. Now I'm going to use a compass to draw a 10 inch circle, a couple of 10 inch circles in for the wreath base. You can go larger if you like, but I settled for 10 inch for this project. And then once my outer circle was drawn, I went in an inch and a half thick and I set my compass to draw another circle on the inside. Now when both of those are drawn, just go ahead and take your X-Acto knife and cut the circles out. Now once your top part of the frame is cut out, just glue it down on top of the other part of the board and then cut that out with the X-Acto knife after gluing it well into place. And then you want to go ahead and sand down any rough edges. Now for the leaves of the wreath, you can freehand your leaves or you can use the template that I provided in the description box below. Just print it out on cardstock. Now you want to grab that sheet of painted poster board. Now I created this by spray painting it with silver paint and dabbing it with paper towel while it was wet. Now I'll put a link how to do this in the upper right hand corner of this video and I'll also put it in the description box below. Now you just go ahead and flip that sheet over and what we will do is trace our template leaf onto the back to cut out the leaves. Now for this leaf, for this wreath size, we'll be cutting out about 28 leaves. So first, you just want to cut that leaf shape out of that cardstock. And then you want to place the template down and take your pencil and then trace that leaf shape onto the back of the poster board. And here are all of my shapes traced onto the back of that poster board. So now I'm going to cut these out with an X-Acto knife because it's quicker for me, but you could use scissors as well. You're just going to grab your cutting mat and cut out all of your leaf shapes. And here are all of the pieces cut out. Now to make sure that the fold will be straight and centered, I'm going to use a ruler and that embossing tool to create a crease down the center of each leaf. And now that our leaves are shaped, we can add the rustic accents. Now to do this, I'll use this dark brown color, this black acrylic color, and just a touch of this red acrylic color. We want to mix and blend the colors until you get a rich dark brown color and then grab one of your leaves and you want to start dabbing it onto the leaf. You also want to make sure that you outline each leaf with this color as well. Then just finish up with adding random rustic details and let these dry completely. And now we'll grab the wreath ring that we cut out. We're going to be using hot glue to attach the leaves. So you want to start by adding a leaf pointing slightly outward and then hot glue it into place. And then you want to place another leaf 
on top pointing inward, just making sure that they're overlapping slightly right below each other. You just wanna make sure you don't see any of the wreath underneath. And here is my wreath, all complete. Now for the frame, I'm gonna to measure to find out the alignment to place my skewers. Now the opening is about 15 inches, so the skewers will be placed about five inches apart from top to bottom. Now the inside length is about 25 inches, so the middle skewers will be placed approximately eight inches apart from side to side. Now I'm just gonna make sure everything looks okay before I paint and glue the skewers on. Make sure you mark those marks and then we can continue. And now we're ready to paint. So I'll be using this white acrylic paint, nutmeg brown, and this pavement gray paint. Now I already started, oops, I didn't start my camera, so sorry. <laughs> but all I did was make some brown markings with that nutmeg paint mixed with a little bit of the gray, and you just place that on randomly. And then I'm gonna mix some of that pavement gray with the white, and I wanna dab off most of that to make I have a, you know, a mostly dry brush. And then we're gonna dry brush the accents around the frame. And then you wanna wash your brush and you wanna dry brush some of that white on as a final touch. This will kinda of blend in all of your distressing and make it look more natural. And here is the finished distressed wood look. And now we can move on to painting the skewers. Now these will just be painted in the solid black color. Now that they're dry, we can go ahead and add them to our frame. So you want to grab your frame and turn it over to the back side. Just start aligning those skewers with the lines that you have marked. And then grab your wire clippers and you just want to cut the skewers down to size so they don't overlap the edges. Then just place a line of hot glue on each side and you wanna press those skewers into place. And then you just repeat this process with the last two skewers going across. So once everything is in place, I'm just gonna follow up with a tad bit of that hot glue on those skewers for good measure. And here is the completed frame. Now you can add your own wreath or you can add that wreath that we just made to the center to complete the look. And here is the completed project all put together. I am just so in love with the way that these pieces turned out. Now this frame reminds me so much of old weathered wood and those leaves really look like metal. Now you can attach the wreath to the frame or hang it on its own, like a hook, like I did, so you can change it out. I mean, this would be a great idea for changing seasons and decor. And it's so easy to get this detailed wood look. All you have to do is use some cheap acrylic paints and it looks so realistic. Be sure to let me know in the comments where you think the best place to display this type of decor in your home. Now here is 
my inspiration piece for this project. Now I thought this item was so gorgeous, but I didn't want to pay $74 for it. So I decided to create my own version using foam board and grabbed a few extra supplies from the Dollar Tree and my crafting stash. Now for this project, we will need a half a sheet of this white foam board from the Dollar Tree, a roll of this wood grain contact paper from the Dollar Tree. We'll also need a half sheet of this black foam board from the Dollar Tree. Now the first thing we're going to do is unpackage that contact paper and we want to lay it out with the grain running horizontally. And then I'm going to measure across it 22 inches, which is two inches more than the height of the project. And then I want to cut it off with my X-Acto knife or you can use a pair of scissors. And then I'm going to roll each end opposite of that curling pattern to help it lay flat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that back of the contact paper every two inches. And this is to cut for blanks. Now if you want to keep this as one sheet that's fine, but the planks give it a more realistic look. Now once you mark it, you can cut it carefully with a pair of scissors, but using an X-Acto knife will give you the straightest and neatest lines. And here are all of your two inch strips. So now I'm gonna grab that black foam board and I am going to cut it in half. So the total width of the board is 30 inches. So I'm going to measure and mark it and cut it at 15 inch. Now I wanna cut it with my X-Acto knife and the key to cutting crisp lines is to use a fresh angled blade. So now I'm going to take those strips and I want to start to apply them to my board. So as you can see, they are longer than the board, but that, that is what you want so the edges can be wrapped around the edges. So once you place that strip along the edge, overlap it about half an inch on the sides, and then you want to trim and fold over the edges. So now when applying that second strip, you want to leave just the tiniest gap in between the strips to give it a more realistic wood plank look. And then you want to continue with the remaining strips the same way, and these are all the strips applied. Now to reduce that sheen and give it a more worn look, I'm going to go over that contact paper with some sandpaper and I want to sand lightly across the entire sheet of the board. Now I wanted to add a little bit of texture and dimension so I'll use this brown and white acrylic paint. So I just want to mix those paints together until I get a light tan color. And then I want to take my chip brush and I want to dry brush that color onto the board, making sure I go in the direction of the grain. Now I'm putting very little paint on the brush and this gives you a very dry look on your paint. Now once that dries, I am going to take my sandpaper and I want to sand and blend in that distressing with that sandpaper. 
So now I'm going to take that white foam board and I'm going to cut it in half at 15 inches just like I did my black foam board. Now this will be the decorative border. So I wanna make an inch and a half border around the entire edge of the board. Now I originally wanted to go with two inches, but I found that one and a half inch looked a lot better. So the next thing I wanna do is to mark that cross section in the middle. Now my ruler was a little short to reach corner to corner, so I just grabbed a scrap piece of wood to help align it and draw my center X. Now that the lines are marked, I am gonna mark three quarters on each side of my X so the total width of that bar will be one and a half inches to match the border. And here's how the frame looks when it's all marked and ready. So now all we have to do is to cut out the openings with our X-Acto knife. Now once everything is nicely cut, you wanna carefully remove all the four triangular pieces. And here is our finished frame. So you can sand off any uneven and jagged edges if you like. So now we're gonna take our wood plank background and I'm gonna place the white frame right on top. Now you're gonna check the fit. Now if the fit is good, all we're gonna do is use hot glue to apply the frames together. And once you finish applying it, you're making sure you get under all those edges, you're gonna let it sit and dry for a few minutes. Now I wanted to add some light distressing to the white part of the frame. So I'm gonna use some of this dark brown acrylic paint and I'm just gonna lightly mark around some of the edges. And now that that's done, we can add our flower accent. So I'm gonna use this small plastic coffee container and I'm just gonna remove the labels and lids and clean it thoroughly. Now you can also use a wreath and I'll link the tutorial in the upper right hand corner of this video and in the description box if you're interested in making that. Now to apply our container, I will be using two of these 12 inch zip ties that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm gonna make a small slice in each inner corner of that X pattern in the middle. And I'm gonna start by feeding both of those zip ties through the back to the front of the board. And then you wanna take your container and you wanna place it in the center and wrap those zip ties around the threads of the container and then feed those zip ties back through the back on that other side. And then you just flip it over and secure the zip ties together in the back. And now that it's sturdy and in place, all we have to do now is just add your flowers. Now I have these bundles of flowers in my stash. And there it is, gorgeous. Now since this is fairly lightweight, I'm gonna add some jute twine with hot glue to the back and this will hang the entire piece. And here is the final project, you guys. Can you believe that this piece was made from foam board? 
Now I really like this two layer design and it gives this piece a lot of dimension and it really resembles real wood. And these sweet flowers really add a pretty pop of color and they perfectly fit into the project. Now I really love all the details in the wood paneling in this piece and that distressing really make it stand out. You all have to let me know in the comments if you think this look hit the mark. <laughs> I really hope that you all are enjoying these crafts so far, but I wanted to pop in really quick and let you all know that you could follow me on all of these platforms as she so craft D E E. So now let's jump right into that next DIY. Now for this project, we'll need one of these glass signs from the Dollar Tree, two bags of glass marbles from the Dollar Tree in any color, We'll need a piece of foam board from the Dollar Tree. And we'll need one ping pong ball from the Dollar Tree as well. Now to make the arches, we'll use this template that I have created and it is linked in the description box below. So go ahead and print out that template and then cut it out. Then you want to go ahead and grab your foam board and what we're going to do is we're going to trace that template onto the board. Now we are going to need 12 of these arches. And here are all 12 arches traced out. So now we're going to lay out our cutting mat and we're going to cut out all of our arches and we're going to be using an X-Acto knife to do this. Now you want to make sure you use a new and sharp blade for the smoothest and easiest cuts. And here are all of our arches stacked up and ready to go. So now you, what you want to do is group them in groups of three, and this will make four arches. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our glue gun, and we're gonna run a bead of glue down that first arch. And then we're gonna place an arch on top and press it into place. And then we're gonna do the same, and we're gonna apply a second arch on top of that. You want to press them all together so there's a nice tight bond and now you have a three stacked arch. You want to repeat this with all of the pieces and you should have four triple stacked arches ready to go. Now here I am, I'm just going ahead and trimming off any jagged edges and unevenness. You kind of want to make sure that all the edges are as even as possible for the cleanest look. And now that they're all trimmed, I'm going to go ahead and take a sheet of white cardstock and what I want to do is cut it into strips that measure just slightly over a half an inch. Now you can also do poster board if you don't have cardstock on hand. And now that we have all of our strips, we can go ahead and adhere them to the edge of the foam arches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my glue gun. I want to apply hot glue along that raw edge and start applying that strip all the way around the inside and outside covering all those raw edges of the arch. Now this should result in a nice clean look all the way around. And now once the strips are applied, we want to go ahead and trim any overlap that you may have. And here are all of your arches, nice and solid. Now if you have any jagged edges left over, you could just use a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper to smooth those out. And now I'm just going to go ahead and grab that picture frame. I'm going to remove it from the packaging and set it aside. 
So now what we want to do is add the marbles to the arches. So I'm going to go ahead and place them in a container so they don't roll all over my working table. Now what we'll do is apply those marbles along the outside spine of the arch. So the first thing we want to do is we want to apply a bead of E6000 along that spine. And we want to stop right before the top flat edge. And then we want to take our glue gun and we want to apply a dot of hot glue up on, put it right on top of that E6000 and we want to apply the marbles all the way up the spine. And here's what it should look like. Now when they're all in place, apply another dot of hot glue between each marble and this should give it extra security. And then you repeat that for all of the arches. So now we're going to cut out our circle. So we want to grab three of those foam board scraps for your arches and we want to grab a compass. We want to make circles about three and a half inches wide. So go ahead and set your compass and draw your circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut those out with the X-Acto knife. Now we want to repeat this to make two more circles. And so now we have our three circles and what we're going to do is we're going to hot glue those together. And then we're just going to trim the edges to make them even. And then when they're even, we're just going to go ahead and apply that cardstock strip along the raw edge, just like we did with our arches. And then we're going to grab our ping pong ball and what I want to do is poke a hole in the end with a straight pin so it releases the air and you can press the end in slightly with your thumb. Now once that end is nice and flat, we could go ahead and we'll apply some hot glue to it and apply it to the center of that circle. And then we just set this to the side to dry. And now we're going to grab our picture frame and we're going to remove this logo. So we flip it over to the back side and I'm going to use this 100% acetone mixture to remove it. We're just going to place, place this on a cotton pad and as you can see it dissolves the letters fairly quickly and removes it very easily. Then sit this to the side and now that my beads are almost dry, I am going to go ahead and remove that last bead in the row and this is so it fit in the tray. You don't even have to apply this at first, but I removed it at the last minute because I thought it'd make a better fit for our tray. And we're just going to make sure that this is dry. So now I'm going to take two of the arches and I'm going to place one in each corner and I'm going to match up those middles. Once the middles are matched, I'm going to go ahead and apply a generous amount of hot glue and connect the two pieces at that center and I want to hold it in place until it's bonded. And then I'm going to take the other two arches and I'm going to trim off about a quarter of an inch from the top edge. And this is so they will fit against the center arch. So now that my arch across the middle is all nice and glued into place, we can go ahead and take that third piece and we're going to determine the placement and the fit. 
Now, since this piece is placed at an angle, we're going to be cutting that top edge at an angle as well as shown. And here is the angled cut. And now we're going to apply a generous amount of hot glue and press that third arch into place. Now once that's secure, we're going to flip it around and we're going to repeat this for the other side. I'm going to cut this piece at an angle, get it all nice and fitted, sand it down if needed, and then we're going to apply that hot glue and secure this into place. Now once everything is nice and bonded, I'm going to take some scrap pieces of that cardstock. I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to glue them to the seams as reinforcement. And then I'm going to take that circle piece and I'm going to apply it to the top center of that arch using hot glue. And then I'm going to reinforce that connection underneath by applying hot glue to the seams. And now that everything is nice and dry, we can go ahead and paint. Now I will be using this flat white spray paint by Krylon, applying two to three coats to the beads and the ball on top. And here it is all nice and painted and dry. So now I'm gathering up my paint supplies because I will be doing some distressing. Now we'll be using this white acrylic paint and this pavement gray acrylic paint to do this. Now I'm going to start by using a small brush and I'm going to blend that white and gray until I get the color I like. And then what I want to do is to start applying the distressing along the edges of the arch. And then what I'm going to do is take my chip brush and I want to dry brush on the paint blend for a worn look. And you also want to make sure you distress that circle on the top. And you also want to make sure you get some distressing on those beads as well. So now that that is done, we can sit that to the side to dry. So now we're going to go ahead and grab the frame and we're going to distress the edges of the frame in the same manner. Again, I'm just going to start by distressing the edges all around the top and the bottom and also making sure we get those corners as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and dry stress the worn look. I'm going to dry brush the worn look on there. All right, so now that everything is dry, we can add some scrap paper to the bottom. And this is just a scrap piece that I printed out from my computer. So what I'm going to do is I cut it to size and I'm just going to tape this to the bottom of the frame so I can change it out as you like. It'll be great to change these out for all the seasons, seasons that you like and styles. And then we just add our frame on top and this project is complete. 
and here is the finished project you guys oh my goodness I'm just so so happy with the way that this turned out now I simply added some candles and some lamb ear greenery to my display and wow it just totally makes this arch look wonderful and I love that the arches can be lifted out to make the tray easier to style and have access to you guys need to let me know in the comments how you would style this tray in your home now for this project we'll start with one foam board from the Dollar Tree now we're gonna lay out that foam board and we're going to be cutting it in half so we're gonna measure and mark 13 inches from the edge and then I'm gonna draw a line to connect those marks now this will end up being your cut line and then you want to place down your cutting mat underneath the board and just use your ruler to cut a straight line on the mark with an exacto knife you want to make sure you have a fresh blade for the best sharpest cuts So once the piece is cut in half, you want to stack that shorter piece on top of the top of the longer piece and then trace that cut line right onto that longer piece. And then you just cut that to match. And now you want to take that excess piece that you have left over and then we're going to uh, make some markings in half inch increments. You want to start on top of the shorter end and then flip it around and also make half inch increment markings on the other shorter end. And now you just grab a straight edge and you want to draw lines to match up those markings. And now all you have to do is to cut out all of those strips with your X-Acto knife. Now you'll end up only using two or three of these strips, but I cut out a bunch just in case. And once those are cut, you just want to sit those to the side. So now we want to take one of those foam bores and I'm going to measure an inch and a half from that top short edge. I want to make those marks and then I want to draw a line connecting those marks. Now we're also going to mark the center of the top and we also want to mark the bottom and this will be at six and a half inches. And then we're just going to draw a line connecting those two marks right down the center. Now I made a square template that is four inches on each side and you can make this from a scrap piece of paper. Now I'm just going to place my template square and I'm going to uh, put it along that top line and I want it to be a half an inch away from that center line we just drew. And then I'm just going to trace my square onto the board. And then I'm taking my ruler and marking that one inch border on the other side of that center line. And then I'm going to take my square and I'm going to trace another square the same way as the first. Now for the second row of squares, I want them one inch apart. So I will mark and measure and draw a line at that one inch to, and then I'll connect those marks. And then I'm just going to make two more squares on that line for a total of four squares. And then I'm going to draw a line an inch and a quarter below those last two window squares. And then I'm going to measure along the bottom one inch and then draw a line. And now we can take those half inch strips that we cut out and we can work on making the two frames for our door. 
Now I wanna lay that piece in between those two bottom lines we just marked, and I wanna mark and cut two pieces that fit right in between those two lines. And then I wanna measure and cut two pieces that will fit right in between those two long pieces and this will be the top and bottom of that frame. And then I'm just gonna repeat this on the other side. And now that all of our pieces are cut out, we can use hot glue to secure them into place. Now we just wanna make sure that they're nice, straight, and even, and that the corners are square when gluing them down. Just make sure you use those lines that we drew as guides and you shouldn't have a problem. We wanna make sure all the pieces are snug fitting together and everything looks good. Now once both sides are done, we can move on to the next step. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our cutting mat and we're gonna cut out those window squares. Now it's a good idea to use your ruler along those lines when cutting and you'll result in the cleanest and most professional look. And then once they are all cut, you just wanna gently press out all of those squares. And here is what it will look like. Now, if you have any jagged edges, you can gently sand those out with some sandpaper or a nail file. And now you wanna grab that second foam board that you cut out and we're gonna be hot gluing these two pieces on top of each other. So you just wanna run a bead of glue around the, whole, the entire edge and in between those panes. Now once they are nice and secure in place, I'm just gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna carefully cut out those window squares and I'm gonna use the edges of those first squares as a guide. And once they're cut, you just wanna remove those pieces and then sand any edges as needed. And so now that everything looks good, we can move on to painting our piece. Now I will be using that same cobalt blue acrylic paint. Now when applying the paint, we wanna apply in long even strokes and we wanna be sure to cover those edges all around the frames. You wanna get inside of the squares and you also wanna get the outside of the frame as well. And here is our first coat. Now, when this dries, you wanna apply a second coat and let the entire frame dry completely. And here's our door all ready to go. Now to hang this, I'm simply gonna cut a piece of jute twine in about four or five inches long. And then I'm just gonna put it on the back in the top center and I wanna hot glue each end into place and I wanna be very generous with that glue.
Now once that glue is dry to touch, we can add our wreath. Now I made this wreath in a previous DIY and I will link the instructions up in the right hand corner of this video and also in the description box below. Now to decorate our wreath for fall, I will be using these pumpkins with a clip from the Dollar Tree. Now all I'm gonna do is clip these pumpkins onto the wreath. Now I also have these flowers that I clipped from a bunch that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna add those in as well. These add a nice little pop of fall color and I really love them. And then I'm just gonna add a dab of hot glue on each one to secure them in place. Now to hang the wreath on the door, I made a hook from a large paper clip and I hooked it to the back of the wreath and then over the top of the door. So I almost forgot, I need a knob for my door. So I am going to use this wood ball piece that I had in my stash that I got from the Habitat for Humanity, but you can also use these mini cauldrons from the Dollar Tree or a Dollar Tree ball or just use anything you like that resembles a doorknob. So I wanna take my doorknob and I wanna paint it and I'll be using this silver spray, uh, not spray paint, it's acrylic paint. <laughs> and I'm going to apply two coats of this acrylic paint to my ball and I wanna make sure that they dry thoroughly in between the two coats. So now that it is dry, we can add it to our door. Now to secure this, I'm just gonna add a few rounds of that hot glue and then secure it into place. And then once that glue dries, all we have to do is add our wreath back on. And now you can just hang up your mini door on your wall. <laughs> oh my goodness, I am so in love with this creation. Now I think that this blue was the perfect color for this and it really does stand out, especially with that wreath. And this wreath is definitely one of my favorites. This is from a Kirkland's dupe and it fits right into this project. Now all of the details in this piece are so easy to accomplish and it really makes the final result worth waiting for. Now you can keep this up year round, just switch out your wreath, so easy and useful. the Dollar Tree and two of these waste baskets from the Dollar Tree. Now to make the window you want to print out the template provided in the description box below. The pieces are numbered for easy assembly. Now to put them together just line up the outline of the frames by folding or cutting off those white ends and then taping them together as shown here. Now once all taped together, we want to flip that template over and we want to apply tape along the seam to make sure it's all secured in place. So now I'm going to cut off that excess paper along that straight edge of the window frame. So now I'm going to lay out my foam board and I want to place that template down with that straight edge aligning to the edge of that foam board. Now I'm also gonna fold in that white edge at the bottom of piece four and align it to the bottom of the frame with the edge of the board as well. Once in place, just secure it with some painter's tape. Now to transfer the design onto the board, I will be using the embossing tool that I purchased from the Dollar Tree, or you can use the end of a pen or pencil if you like. And all you're going to do is go over the entire outline of the flame, gently tracing it so that indention is transferred to the foam board. So once you have it completely traced, remove your template, and then we're gonna flip that foam board over and repeat this on the opposite side. Now two frames can be made on one piece of foam board. 
Now, I wanted to say a quick thank you to Minecraft by Sabrina for converting my window designs into a printer-friendly version, as well as providing the SVGs for those who have cutting machines. Please be sure to check her out and let her know that I sent you. The link to her is in the description box below. So now with the indentions traced, we're just going to trace over with a pencil and I'm just going to mark all the corners and put tick marks on there as cutting guides and then lay out my mat and get ready to cut it. I'm going to grab my straight edge and an X-Acto knife. You want to make sure it has a fresh blade and this will make sure you get a super smooth cut. And then you're just going to align your straight edge with the marks that you made and cut out the entire frame. So then you can remove all your window inserts and making sure the edges are nice and trim. And then all you have to do after that is you can use a nail file or sandpaper to smooth out any jagged edges that you may have. And then you just want to repeat this cutting process with the second frame. Now I'm going to be using the same acrylic paint combination to distress the frame. Now you want to start by um, adding those random brown accents all over both of the frames. And then you want to mix and blend some of that gray and white, making sure you dab off that excess and then dry brush it onto the frame as well. Now after you complete this step, you want to make sure that you wash your brush and then we're going to do a dry brushing of the white acrylic paint all over and this will blend in all of your distressing. And then just, we want to let these dry. Okay, so I originally planned to make this into a mirror and I wanted to use this peel and stick mirror paper that I purchased from Amazon. So I applied the paper to a new piece of foam board and I removed that plastic covering and I wasn't super impressed with this clarity, but I figured let me go ahead, apply the frames and maybe it'll look better once everything came together. So what I did was hot glue the frames on and then I went ahead and cut them out with my X-Acto knife. All right, so here they are all cut out. I just was not happy with this look. So I went ahead and I removed the mirror panes by cutting them out with my X-Acto knife. And after cutting them out, I just filed all my edges smooth. So now we have our double layer frames to start with. I thought I could try incorporating the garden fence into this, but it was just a few inches too short. Now that's when I decided to go with a wire look and I didn't have enough of the Dollar General grill toppers to do this with, but I did have two of these white waste baskets that I had in my craft stash. So I started by cutting off the bottom of the waste basket with wire clippers. And then I went ahead and cut off that top ring as well. So then what we want to do is locate the seam of the basket and we want to cut up that seam. So now once it's cut, we want to stretch and even out that wire basket, making it as flat as possible. And then we want to take one of our frames and we want to make sure that our stretched basket will fit. And then once we determine that, we're going to apply the wire to the back of our frame with hot glue. Now I found that using a piece of parchment paper to press the wire into the glue was very helpful. Just be careful because the hot glue can be very hot. And we just wanna repeat this all the way around the frame until done. 
Now, as you can see, a heavy duty pair of scissors will cut the wire as well. So when you go to trim your edges, you can also use this option. So now I wanted to apply handles to my windows and I printed these out on cardstock. Now you can use real handles if you like as well. Now I'm going to include the template for the handles I used in the description box below. Now we're just going to proceed with carefully cutting these out. Now once they're both cut out, we simply just hot glue these into place and you are done. And there you go. Oh my goodness, you guys. I am so happy with the way that this turned out. I just love how the distressed wood looks on this piece and it perfectly pairs with the wire backing. And those handles, oh my goodness, don't they look realistic? I think I made a good choice by going with the wire on this one. Let me know in the comments if you are team wire or team mirror. Now here's my inspiration photo for this project. Now I've been eyeballing this piece for a while and I didn't quite know how to get that beaded wood look, but if you know me, I'm always up for a challenge and I worked out a method using Dollar Tree items. Now for this project, we'll need three foam boards from the Dollar Tree and one poster board that's not pictured. We'll need two to three bags of marbles from the Dollar Tree. We'll also need some skewers from the Dollar Tree or Walmart. And we'll need some of this quarter inch irrigation tubing from Home Depot. Now, if you have been following me for a while, you will remember these shutters that I made. Now, I will be using the same template for this new project along with an additional modification. Now, if you are interested in making these shutters as well, the DIY will be linked in the upper right hand corner of this video and also in the description box below. Now the first thing we are going to do is we want to print and we want to assemble this template. Now this is available in the description box below. We want to assemble the pieces in the order as seen here and we're just going to use some scotch tape. Now we will be modifying the top of this piece and I have sketched out a template that you can easily add on with the guides provided. Now you just want to place it on top of your frame template and you want to align the markings. And then just tape it into place. Now we do need to cut this piece out right here because this is an extension of the outer round edge that we will attach. We're just gonna fold it on the dotted line and we wanna match up those triangles on that main piece and then tape it into place. And now we can just cut the template out. And now that our template is ready, we are just gonna grab a piece of foam board. Now we're gonna place that template on top. When we wanna make sure that we align the bottom and outside corner with the bottom corner of the foam board. And then we're just gonna tape it into place with some painter's tape. Now before we trace this on, just take that tape off and roll it up and place it underneath the template so it does not get in the way. And then I'm gonna take my ruler and I wanna mark the center of the top and then start tracing on the arch onto the foam board. And then I'm gonna mark the bottom center as well so we'll know the placement on the other side. So now I'm just gonna take off and remove that template. I wanna flip it over face down and line it up on the other side. We wanna make sure it lines up with those center marks. 
then just press it and tape it down into place and then we can trace the other side of the arch and the side. So now we have the full frame traced on the board and we can cut it out. Now we want to make sure that you have your cutting mat down for this and grab your ruler and X-Acto knife. Now I can't stress this enough, having a brand new blade and your X-Acto knife will give you cuts as smooth as butter so I strongly advise you use a brand new blade. So now you want to carefully start cutting your frame out and you want to pull that blade in one continuous motion. You want to make sure that you use your ruler for all your cuts that are straight. So now we're going to need a two inch border for our frame. So I'm going around the piece marking two inches from the edge. And now I'm taking my ruler and I'm just connecting up all of my dots to make sure that the ruler is used on all of the straight edges. And then you can start to cut out the inside of your frame with your ruler and X-Acto knife. Just make sure you take your time, especially going around the arches, because you want to make sure this is a nice clean cut. And then you could carefully remove your insert. You have your first layer of the frame. So now we're going to grab that second foam board and we're going to be placing our frame on top of it. I'm going to flip the frame over and I want to apply hot glue to the frame and then I'm going to apply it to that foam board. You want to make sure that when you apply the glue you want to align it with the edge corner of the second board. And then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and we are going to cut the frame out of that second board and we're going to use our ruler to help and we're also going to cut around those curves. And then once the inside is cut, then we want to carefully remove the outside edges as well. And now we have a double layered board. Now we want the frame to be extra sturdy, so I'm gonna add a third board and I'm gonna do everything again the same way. And here is our triple thick frame that we will be working with today. Now I wanted to cover and finish off those raw edges, so I will be cutting strips of this poster board just about a half an inch wide, a little bit over, and I wanna cover the inside and outside edges. Now you wanna make sure you measure the thickness of your frame so you know the exact size that will fit your piece. I'm just gonna make marks across, and then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna draw my lines. And then I'm going to cut them out with a ruler and my X-Acto knife and you'll need about six strips for this project. So now we can start to apply the strips to the frame. Now I'm going to be applying the matte side of the poster board to the outside and inside edges of the frame. Now I like to start on a corner so I'm just going to apply a dab of hot glue there and I'm going to apply the corner of the strip. And then I'm just gonna start to apply another bead of hot glue five or six inches at a time. And I wanna run that strip, making sure it's nice and even along the edge. Now once that outside is done, you can apply your strips to the inside. And here they are all applied on the inside and out. And I guarantee you, this will give you a nice, clean and smooth finish. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark a line down the center of the frame all the way around. Now once you make your marks, you wanna connect the line. 
and this is what it should look like all the way around the frame. Then what we need to do is to take our X-Acto knife and we need to make a cut about an eighth of an inch away from the side of each of the, each side of that center line. Now you only want to cut through that top layer of the foam board. And then we want to take something with a rounded end like at the end of a marker and press along that center line where you made your cuts. And this will create a well. This will hold the beads when you apply them around your frame. And this is what the well will look all the way around the frame. So now we want to grab those marbles and we also want to grab our E6000. Now I'm going to start by applying some of that E6000 in that well and then I want to apply the marbles adding a bit of hot glue for that instant hold. And here are all of the marbles attached. Now to add a little bit of extra security, I will be adding hot glue in between my marbles. So to control the oozing and spillage, I'm going to apply a piece of that painter's tape along the marble's edge where I plan to glue. And then I'm going to take my hot glue, apply it in between those marbles, and then after I do that, I'm going to immediately remove that tape. And we're just going to repeat this on the other sides. And now once that hot glue dries, just dust off and remove all of those hot glue webs. Now I'm going to prime my marbles with this Zenser 123 primer. I love this primer because it has absolute the greatest coverage ever and it dries up super quick. So while that dries, you can work on getting the tubes prepared. Now I drew a layout how they'll be spaced. Now the center tubes will be right in the middle and that'll be approximately seven and three quarters inches from the inside edge. Now the two tubes across the front will be about eight inches apart from the bottom inside edge. Now for this arched tube, it will be placed with a three inch spacing from that inside edge of the frame. And for these two tubes, I'll call antenna tubes. They'll be placed midway between each arch side at the five and a half inch mark. So now that you have all of your dimensions, you can copy this onto your cutouts and use it as a guide. So now we can just cut the tubing and we'll start with the two pieces across the front. Now you just want to make sure that you cut all of your pieces with at least an extra inch on each end so you can adhere it to the frame. And then the next piece we'll cut is that center piece. Now we won't need a piece for this part, so I'll just make it disappear. And there we go. So now we could cut out those two um, antenna pieces at the top. And now we're gonna do the arch. So we're gonna grab a long piece of that tubing to make the arch. So once we figure out where the middle will be, we just wanna bend and crease that tubing in the center. And we just wanna make sure those tails are gonna be long enough where they go on the board and we can cut them to fit later on. So now that our frame is dry, we can start to add our color. Now, I actually think it looks great in white too. So I wanna go for a wood look like our inspiration piece. So I'm gonna protect my work surface. Now I'll be trying out this antiquing wax by Waverly today. Now I've never used this product, but I'm excited to try it out. Now I'm gonna start by using it on my chip brush and I'm gonna apply the product to the frame. Now I did start applying fairly lightly, as you could tell, I was probably kind of afraid to use it, but once I got used to the consistency, I started to play around with it a bit and I was applying some texture and grains with my brush. I actually really like it. Now once the face of that frame is covered, we're gonna go in with a softer brush and I'm going to apply um, the antiquing wax to the tops and sides of the uh, marbles. 
Now after we apply it to a few of the marbles, I'm just gonna lightly dust it with a cloth for a more look, worn look. Now once the entire frame face is done, um, we can actually start working on the sides of the frame. And we're just gonna apply a layer of that wax on the side. Now for the aged look, we'll be using this black acrylic paint and we'll be using this at the base and in between some of the marbles. Now I'm gonna use a small firm brush and I'm gonna apply the black paint at the base along the edges of the marbles and this part is usually white so you'll know where to put this at. And then I'm gonna apply a bit of that black color along the marbles and I'm gonna go in with the chip brush behind it and kind of fade and blend it in. Now this gives it a really worn look. Now I'm also gonna repeat this for the inside of the marbles as well. Now both sides are cohesive. And here is our rustic beaded frame. So now we just let this sit out to completely dry. Now once that frame is dry, we're gonna grab the insert we drafted the measurements on and we're going to place that frame right side down right on top of it and we kind of want to line it up and copy the markings to the back of our frame now this will give us a guide where we're going to put our tubing so we're going to start by applying the two pieces that go across the front first so to help keep these tubes nice and straight i'm going to be inserting these skewers now to make these longer to fit i'm simply going to tape the flat ends of the skewers together with scotch tape and then i'm going to clip off all of the pointed ends So we want to straighten out that tube as much as possible and then we can insert one of those skewers into the tubing. Now it's going to be a little long but we can go ahead and trim off all of the excess to match the length. And now all we do is add some hot glue to those marks that we made and we can apply those tubes into place. Now you wanna make sure that you hold it in place about 30 seconds until that glue really grabs on. And then we're gonna prepare and apply that second one right across the front the same way. Now while you're applying these, you do wanna take occasional measurements just to make sure everything is coming together evenly spaced. So now I'm gonna prepare those arched tubes and I'm going to be placing a skewer into each end. And then I'm just gonna trim off the excess skewer and, and then I'm gonna align it in a piece kinda going along with my template. Now when adhering it in place, I'm gonna start by applying it to the top cross piece first and then I'm gonna put two dots of glue and place it into place. And then I'm gonna apply hot glue to the bottom cross piece and press it into place as well. And then at the bottom, we'll trim it down to size to fit and then we'll add hot glue along the bottom and adhere the ends to the frame. Now while applying these, you can add tape to hold the ends in place while the glue dries if you need to. So now we're gonna add the little short stick up top at the very center of the frame. And then we're gonna add that bottom portion of the centerpiece.
And now we're gonna add those two antenna pieces. But first I'm gonna trim down that top edge of the center piece we just applied because we wanna make sure that those antenna pieces have a nice fit right next to it. So I'm just gonna apply each one of those antenna pieces in place from the center out at that 5.5 inch mark on each side. Now to hang, each, hang this piece, I took some thick jute twine and I tied a double knot on each end and attached it to the frame with a heaping amount of hot glue on each end. Now I'm just gonna remove all of the hot glue gun webs. I'm gonna double check to make sure everything is secure. And now this piece is ready to display. So now you can hang up your creation. I am so in love with how this piece turned out. Now I think the finish on this turned out amazing and I'm really impressed on how well that antiquing wax worked on this project. And of course that tubing always looks great and it's so much fun to work with. Now you would never know that these were marbles and foam board at first glance and that wood look really comes through in this piece. Now I think this piece has lots of detail and it's definitely worth all of the effort. Let me know in the comments if you think this Dollar Tree frame looks like the $80 inspiration piece. This project will need one pack of these five gallon stir sticks, a piece of foam board from the Dollar Tree, we'll also need a scrap of black foam or black poster board, some boxwood greenery, and six tumbling tower blocks. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our five gallon stir sticks and I wanna measure and mark a cut line of about 17 inches. And then I'm just gonna cut this with my saw. So after cutting, I'm gonna remove one of the sticks and I wanna mark it at the center point and it ended up being eight and a half inches and I wanna cut that in half as well. And now I'm gonna go ahead and prepare to stain. So I'm gathering up my supplies and using my Jacobian Stain by Midwax. Now for these, I'm going to be applying the stain to both sides of the stick, including the printed side. We wanna make sure we get the sides and ends as well. And once they're all stained, sit them to the side to dry. Now for my letters, I'm going to be using this free template that I've linked below in the description box for you to use. I'm also going to be using this foam sheet to trace and cut out my letters. Now you can use poster board if you don't have foam sheet. So I'm going to cut out the letters out and um, out of the printer paper and then I'm going to be taping them to that foam sheet with printer's tape. Now I'm going to be using greenery for my O so I'm not going to be cutting out the O for this project but you can if you like. And once taped into place, I'm just going to cut out those letters and I wanna just sit them to the side once they're all cut out. And now that the paint sticks are dry, we can assemble the frame. So now the printed side will be on the inside of the frame and facing the bottom and we're just gonna form this into a rectangular shape. And once our shape is in place, we're going to adhere it together with this wood glue from the Dollar Tree. Now I wanna apply the glue to both ends of the long stick at the top and bottom of the frame. Now 
Now I'm going to use this tension clamp and put it in the center just to hold it in place while I apply a staple into each corner. And this will add extra support while the glue dries. Now I want to grab that foam board and I want to place my wood frame right on top. I'm going to grab a pencil and I want to trace the inside shape with that pencil. And then just carefully sit your frame to the side while it dries and place our board back on and we can cut that board off using our X-Acto knife and a ruler for straight edges. So once the board is all cut out, we want to make lines across the board, dividing it into four even sections. So I want to mark tick marks into each end, dividing them into four equal sections, and then draw a line with my pencil marking those lines. And then I'm going to take a Sharpie and I want to hand trace those lines out. Now I wanted this to look like shiplap so I'm going to dry brush this white acrylic paint over the lines to make it look a little bit more natural. Now once that's all dry, we can apply our letters. Now I'm just going to lay them out evenly and then once they're right in the place we want them, I'm going to apply hot glue to the back of each letter and apply it into place. And then I'm going to grab that greenery and I want to pull a few pieces from the stem. And then I'm going to take it and I want to glue it onto the board in the shape of the letter O. Now as you're applying, you want to make sure you overlap and trim the pieces as you go along. And here's the first round. Now I'm going to add a second round to make it a little bit more full. Now as a final touch, I'm going to add this little bow at the top of the O. And now we're going to take our frame and we're going to apply those tumbling blocks. We're going to apply two of the blocks to the inside long sides and one to the inside short sides and we're going to use hot glue to apply them. Now to permanently secure the sign to the frame, place hot glue on top of the blocks and then press the board into place. Now I wanted mine to be interchangeable, so I'm just going to press it snugly into place against the blocks without any glue. And now you can see, you don't see any of those tick markings on the front. You can only see them from the back. And here is the completed project. Now, how sweet is this home sign? I think the shiplap look and the black lettering look so great together. And this really makes it look high end. And I love the classic wreath for the O in this piece. Let me know in the comments which one of these projects was your favorite today. 
Listen, I hope that you all enjoyed seeing these creations again, or for some of you for the very first time. I hope that you all are inspired to create your own home decor using foam core board as well. Now, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and then click on the bell. It's absolutely free. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.